cat, why are you standing on me like this? I don't understand. Well, you guys want to see my cat. Here she is. She's doing a lot better now. She's really sick. If you look here, she's got a glucose monitor. We have to get it replaced soon because it, apparently it wears out pretty close. Continuous glucose monitor, CGM. Cat's meowing at me. She wants food. We need to test her blood sugar before we feed her, though. You guys get to see me stick my cat. Oh, I got Cheez-Its. Yeah, I always have a box of Cheez-Its here. Always. You never know when you're going to need them. Okay, we're going to put it right there. And we're going to we're gonna test Mickey's blood sugar real quick, okay? You guys get to see how this works. Give me just a second. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, sorry, I'm back. You guys saw that it was 448. Um, that's pretty high, but it's not as high as you think if you're a diabetic. Humans should stay within a different range than cats or dogs. Uh, humans should stay 70 to 170, right? Um, cats, it should be 150 to 250. 500 starts to be concerning and we need to do something about it pretty immediately if it hits 500. But up to that point, we're okay. That's like a human hitting like 300 with their blood sugar if a cat hits 500. It's hard to manage your blood sugar. Um, really, really hard because it, it's almost like her pancreas works half the time and the other half it does not. So right now, her CGM, Continuous Glucose Monitor, has gone out because you have to replace it every 14 days. And we've replaced it once before uh, when we went on vacation, but we it, it lapsed. So we're just doing the actual tests right now. We just keep taking the test strips out, sticking her in the ear, because there's a vein in the ear. And that's where I have to hit it. And... You, you know, you take up the blood and you do the test and yeah, that's how it works. Um, 448 is a pretty high level. It's pretty concerning, but I've noticed that she tends to crash hard if she's going to have a hypoglycemic event. It's going to be evident that it's going to be a scary day if her blood sugar is about 200 in the morning. And we're going to have to check her every hour, practically, or every two hours to make sure that she's not, like, going through a hypoglycemia thing. We've got to rub honey on her gums and give her diet, uh, treats that are not diabetic safe um, to try to, you know, the, gives her some carbs that can convert to sugars so that she, you know, long-term uh, raise her sugar. So, anyway... 448 is pretty high. We need to give her four units of insulin, probably. Maybe even six units would be justifiable, but we're really, really worried about hypoglycemia. 
without having a CGM with that thing that just we can scan and tell what what it is and it keeps track of it and an alert goes off if it falls too low or goes too high. Uh, we're worried about a hypoglycemic event more than we are a hyperglycemic event where she has way too high of a sugar level. So we give her insulin twice a day, 10 a.m., 10 p.m., or between 10, 10.30 a.m. and p.m. whenever we feed her. Can't do it on an empty stomach. We just hope for the best, basically. You know, we're just doing the best we can right now. It, it's really hard to get this zeroed in and, and exact. We want it to be 250. That's exactly where we want a cat's blood sugar to be, 250. That's like the perfect number for a cat. Yes, 90 to 120 for human blood sugar. Ouch on the ear prick. I have a CGM and it sounds like your cat is like me. Yep. Yep, it's a challenge. She has, um, you know, hypoglycemic events. She's had a few of them. So I'm really worried she's going to have one and we're not even going to know because that CGM is not active. We need to contact the vet immediately tomorrow to get that thing fixed. There, uh, Lord Falconis, there's no continuous glucose monitor for cats. That's true. It's the human one that we're using right now. And it's tuned to human uh, expectations. So its perfect range is 70 to like 120 or something. And if it's outside that range, then it tells us. And it's always outside that range because that's not the range we want to hit, you know. I've changed the settings on it to kind of turn it into something that, like, basically turn it into alert me if it falls below 100 or goes above 400, and we'll do something about it then. Anyways, yeah, it's hard. It's really, really hard. We do our absolute best for her, and I worry so much that we're not doing it right. Mr. Monster just had to put my cat down at 16 years. He's diabetic just like yours but I'm terrible at monitoring and feeding properly. It's really my fault, and I hope it, he can forgive me. Rip boots. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. My kitty had a hypoglycemic event really bad this morning. It was going on all day. I had to put him down. Wish I did better for him. It is not your fault. Do not blame yourself for that. My cat had a hypoglycemic event too, and I was bad at monitoring it too. And I got her there just in time. It was just in time to the pet hospital. It was an insane amount of money. They saved her life, luckily. But she tends to have these hypoglycemic events. And it's not the type of deal where she has them like, you know, where her, it's like her pancreas just starts working. It's not like this happens like once every two months or something and, it, and we can monitor it. No, this happens randomly throughout the day and it just plummets and we have no way of knowing until she's like in seizure mode, you know. And um, it's really scary. Really, really scary stuff. So not your fault. Do not blame yourself for this. It's hard. Having a diabetic cat is difficult. Really difficult. Props to you for trying. Some people put their cats down when finding out they're diabetic. And you tried. You learned the whole thing. You got the food. You got the monitor. You got every all the stuff. And you did your absolute best. One of the things that I discovered is it's impossible to get blood from a cat's ear, in my opinion, without having this genteel this special sticker you have to have a special pricker that that acts as a vacuum you put your finger on the little thing and it acts as a vacuum and pulls the blood out i don't know how anybody works on it or gets blood from a cat without a little vacuum system like a genteel so if you were working without a genteel i don't blame you not even one bit at all you certainly shouldn't blame yourself it's difficult especially alone Trying to get blood from cat alone? Oh my god, that's that's even harder. So, you know, don't blame yourself, okay? Don't do it. Don't beat yourself up. You did what you could. And it's an overwhelming experience in its own right. Finding out that your cat has diabetes. 
figuring out how to buy the insulin, figuring out how to get the needles and get the test strips and set the right code for the thing and everything. It's, it's overwhelming. You have no idea what you're doing. It's a lot. You know, some people don't do any of it. They walk away. They don't give insulin. They don't test. They don't give, they don't change the food. They don't nothing. They wait for the cat to die on its own. You tried. That is more than can be said for an awful lot of people. So don't blame yourself for that, okay? Wish I did better for him. Don't beat yourself up. You did your best for him, okay? For real. I hope that I've convinced you not to beat yourself up over this. I didn't do very well monitoring Miki's blood sugar either. I was slow about it. I didn't do it very often. It was a challenge, but then she had that hypoglycemic event and they saved her just barely. I basically told them this cat cannot die. Extreme measures, whatever it takes, keep this cat alive. So it was a bad, bad, bad time. All kinds of other bad shit happening at the time too. People don't even understand how complicated it is to have a diabetic pet and, and how overwhelming it is to hear that news. And, and all of this information being thrown at you by the vet about how to, you know, get blood from a cat and how often to stick her and keeping it in a logbook and giving her the insulin, getting the insulin from the pharmacy and the pharmacy's difficult about giving out needles and it's a lot. I understand exactly how you felt, so don't beat yourself up. Thank you, the Bible bat cheers me up. Okay, that's good. I'm glad that the Bible bat could help to some degree. So maybe at our Global Vision store, we ought to start selling some Bible bats in the name of Jesus. Bible bats. The stronghold comes down when you demolish it with the Bible. That's what I was looking for. He dropped the mic and he just smashed the shit out of it. I love it, dude. Love it. You got to start tearing that mess up. You got to break it down. You got to. Oh, he, he really messed that thing up. I love it, dude. He threw the mic down and just went to town. That's fantastic. Thank you. The Bible bat cheers me up. Okay, that's good. I'm glad that the Bible bat could help to some degree. It's a rough thing having a cat with diabetes, and it is not fair to yourself to blame yourself for an event like that. It's not your fault. You did your best in the moment. You did everything that you could to the best of your ability. You, you're only, ex you know, people can only expect so much of you, you know?